ah, so this is okay. And we want to have one color per face. Nice. Okay, this is, this is let's do this now. Um, yeah, and this is an important concept in graphics applications, which is we we are going to now add color data to our vertices. Remember that in our in our previous assignment, we are passing color as part of our um, it was a uniform. So you could have a uniform color and start you could one solution could be storing color here in the geometry and then updating the color before drawing the shape. That's one way of having different colors per shape. However, that would give you only for for example for the cube, all the faces of the cube would be they would be uh, of the same color. So imagine if you want to have the top white and all the side black, you wouldn't be able to do that. So to have different colors per face you would have to send color together with the vertices. Now this, I think this is an important concept to introduce now because later we're gonna have to do the same thing with normals and other type of uh, uh, data. So let's not use uniforms for colors and let's use attributes for colors. That's essentially what I wanna do. And we can start with a triangle maybe. So let's comment our cube. And now I can simply do this and hopefully you should have only one triangle now in the center. Okay, so now let's just have this simple triangle and I wanna have each vertex here to have a different color. Instead of having all of them red, I want this maybe like this one to be red, this one to be green and this one to be blue. And let's see what happens if you do that. Um, Basically, what we need to do is when you are defining your vertices, here we have X and Y positions, X, Y, Z positions, right? But you also could pass, you could, what you could do is you could change, you could send color information in here as well. Um, let's, for example, the, if I wanna, if I want V1, to have red color, I could say this, one zero zero, which is red. If I want my second vertex to be green, I could say zero, one, zero. If I want my third ver vertex to be blue, I can do zero, zero, one. Well, now, each vertex has six numbers in them, or we want it, each vertex to be, to have six numbers. So whenever we're creating our buffer, we have to set up the buffer in a way that it reads correctly this number. So basically it reads correctly the position and then it reads correctly the color shifted correctly right and then also when i'm reading this reading the second vertex i want to read this as a position and this as color because this as th these are not um, the configurations of this array or the way we are organizing these numbers to be xyz and then rgb this is not default or predefined is we are defined these as programmers so we have to tell webgl to read it this way so let's do that so let's come here in our when when we create our buffer and then let's we're gonna have to say okay we are saying here that position and now I'm gonna comment this and keep these three three lines together because they form kind of a nice block of code um, these three lines together what they do is they retrieve the a position address from the shader you configure that position that variable the way you want on using this line and then you enable those changes with this line so i want to do the same thing for color 
we are doing this for position. Now I want to do the same, th same thing for color because now I want color to be also an attribute. So let's create the attribute in the vertex. Shader, sorry. Let's create the attribute a color. And now the difference is we don't need this uniform anymore. And so now each vertex has a different color. And I want to introduce that because I wanted to show you some, some specific specifics of, of the shaders. Remember I mentioned you cannot have attributes in the fragment shader because they are defined per vertex and the fragment shader doesn't know about vertices. He only knows about fragments or, or kind of sets of pixels or grids of pixels. So we need a way to send the color to the fragment shader because we what you want at the end is to have the color here. But attributes can only be defined in the vertex shader. So what do we do? So to, for this kind of cases, we're going to need the varying, a varying variable which is just an interface in this case for the color. I'm going to call it V color. And I want to say here in, our, in my main, I want to say V color equals to A color. And I'm doing that because now I can actually have a varying variable here. And this line is going to set V color. And then when the fragment shader runs, the color is already set, so I can use the color here now and get the color correctly. Okay. Um, and I think, yeah, so then now we have, we did the work in the shader. So we have a varying variable for the first time. Uh, we have a second attribute and we are pretty much copying this variable here and then reading it using it in the fragment shader but now to finish this idea we have to set up our color attribute so basically let's call this now setup position in the attribute in the shader i want to copy this section and I want to say a color here. And I want to copy this to be a color, a color, a color, and a color. But this thing, so this part is going to be slightly different. Okay. Um, a color is also a vector tree, RGB. So we have three dimensions. This is the same. It's also with flow types inside it. We also, we don't know, don't want to normalize it, right? But now I want to say that the color starts at the three, um, sorry, it, it, we're going to do something like this. We, so the at attribute position, I want to say that attribute a position it starts at zero and then it reads, it has three elements in it. Oh, sorry. It starts at zero. Sorry, it starts at zero. It has three elements in it. And then after reading it, I want to say jump by three as well. I have to say this and I'm going and I kind of have a repeat kind of have to repeat this number because here we won't put actually three, we want to put three type times float size. And because this number is actually a value in bytes and not um, and not actually this, the number of dimensions. So the number of dimensions is three. And this is the size of that, uh, of, of size of this chunk of memory that we are sending. So we have three elements of the type float size and float size, we're gonna have to define it here. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna define float size to be 
and this is a JavaScript. We can we can actually read this size from JavaScript um, by doing this floatery to array the dot dot bytes per element. So this variable here turns out to be equal to four because um, every float in JavaScript has four bytes. And then what you're saying is, I'm gonna read position. Let's go back there. Where is the triangle? I'm gonna read position starting from, from zero. And I want, and I want now to jump, wait, actually I almost made a mistake here. I want to jump to read the next position. I want to jump six times four bytes. So I want to jump all these guys here and then start reading the position again. And then I read three numbers and then I jump all these numbers and then I, I get here and I read the position again. So the jump size is not, is not, is not three times float size, it's actually six times float size. This is the kind of the size of the jump because we have these three color numbers also to jump. So we have to jump all the six and then you can read the position again. We jump six and then you can read the position again. Okay. So I wanna have to speed up a little bit. If you have any questions, you can ask me in my office hours or you post on Piazza. But this is why this is six. And here also for color, this will be the same. Because if I'm reading color, I start from here now. So I don't start at zero, I start at the third index. So pretty much this is three here, three times float size. So this is also in bytes. Essentially you could, technically you should have the same here. We, we had zero before because zero times anything is zero, but essentially just to keep consistent, consistent, uh, I'll just like gonna have zero times float size. So three times float size is because I start reading from index three, zero, one, two, three, and then I read three numbers. Um, and that six is just because I'm, each vertex has six times four bytes. Um, so that's gonna stay the same here. And I think that's it. And this is a major point of confusion for many students, how to manipulate and set up these buffers. Uh, or set up this buffer to read multiple types of data in the same buffer. Um, so pay attention to this and try to um, maybe as an exercise have different pass more or less data here and configure the buffers in a way that you want. Um, I'm gonna move forward because for the sake of time. And okay, let's see. We, I think that's done. We have a position, we have a caller. We are sending this and our triangle has three colors. So let's see what happens. Uh, now, actually I don't have to send this anymore because I don't have a uniform caller anymore. Um, Okay, let's refresh the page. Oh, you don't need the colors or the whole thing here. We don't need this whole thing. Notice that the color is now defined as part of the as part of the geometry. Ooh, interesting. I think we forgot something as well. Here, our vertices they actually now have color information. So I don't they have more than three elements per vertex. They, we now have six elements per vertex. So I have to define this by six as well. We still have three. So if you still have three vertices, right? So if I do now this here, I have six, 18 numbers. I'm dividing 18 by six by six, and then I get three. Um, so this is divided by six here. Uh, okay, what is the problem now? A color, a color. Uh, this should be good. 
zero length. Am I forgetting anything? The shader, the V color, the vector tree, V color equals to A color, V color, A color. Okay, let me, are we rotating this triangle? Are we doing it? Uh, we are not doing any transformations, right? And then triangle here has one zero, 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 one. Okay, let me, this is weird. Uh, this should be good. And I, my, I think I forgot something. Uh, uh, what is that? What is that? Uh, let me double check here. A position, a position, a color, and then a position, a color, false six zero three. A color, a position, and then uh, we should do this by uh, no, this should be this here, yeah. And then when I draw, I send buffer data. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, there is a small bug here. We should see the same triangle, but now with red, green, and blue vertices. And I, I'm i not finding the problem here at this point. So I'm gonna fix this. And now it's already 12. So I'm gonna fix this and and record the fix and upload it to YouTube. So then you get you get this fixed. But essentially, yeah, we should see the triangle here with uh, centered on the screen with red, green, and blue uh, colors, and also like the the, um, the interpolation, the, all the intermediate pixels to be interpolated colors. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't see here what is the problem. So. What I'm missing. It's six geometry triangles, uh, array buffer. If you're drawing, you're updating the shader model uh, with model matrix elements. Yes. A color. Float size. Unless I, unless this is wrong, float to the two array. Float. Let me just print this and see if this should be four. Real quick. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is a problem. I think I, I typed this in the wrong way. Let me just double check. I have um, I have it here. Float. Bytes. Oh, biter. Okay, bytes per element. Oh, there you go. Okay, that was, yeah, it would take some time for me to fix that. Good. Um, okay, so this is perfect to finish. So at least we can finish in the right way because I want to discuss what happened here is that you see, we define this to be red, we define to be green, and you define this to be blue, and we got this nice gradient for us. And this is the, the default. Uh, standard or behavior of uh, the graphics pipeline in WebGL. We define colors only per vertex, and then the fragment shader automatically interpolates the colors for us. So we don't we we don't need to do this. If you want again to have a full red triangle, you could you could essentially just have all the colors to be the same here, because if you do that then if you interpolate the same color you get the same color but now you can play with these colors and get this really cool effects 
uh, in your in your animal by just specifying different colors and getting these cool interpolations working. Professor James is going to talk more about interpolations and definitely is going to be one lecture about how this algorithm actually works. And but but this is it. We so we did we did this and we have to anim still have to animate the, 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 the cube. I am going to I'm going to include that part in the video so you can come back and watch later. Okay. But yeah, that's going to be it for now.